donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. La ilaha illa Allah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Mubarak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah we have with us Surah Qalam Surah Al-Qalam uh, with us today The second surah, surah number 68 In Juz uh, Tabar, Juz Tabarak uh, of, uh, of the Qur'an well, alhamdulillah, it is a very, very beautiful surah. So many benefits, so many different points of wisdom, so many uh, tafsirs in it. Uh, really, it's bewildering. It actually needs two or three sessions. But inshallah, we'll try and condense it into one session. So sabr and have patience with us. Uh, and inshallah ta'ala, as we carry on with the tafsir of the other surahs, uh, those things that I can explain in other surahs, rather than in this surah, I will take it to the other surahs, inshallah ta'ala. Please try and have your Qur'an with you if you can. Uh, if you don't have a Qur'an, there's so many Qur'ans available here, inshallah. Please do so, all the brothers and sisters listening online as well. There's a couple of hundred of people logged on. Uh, please, will you also take your Qur'ans with you and follow through uh, so that one of the benefits you will gain, other than just the tafsir of this surah, is that you will also begin to learn Arabic language as well. Yeah, Because as we take it, oh yeah, I remember that word, I remember that word, I know what that word means now. So as we take it over 11 surahs, uh, many of the surahs, many of the words will begin to make uh, an impact and you will understand what they mean inshallah ta'ala. Taib. Surah Al-Qalam uh, is a surah that was revealed uh, as some of the scholars have mentioned uh, in a narration from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who mentioned by Al-Wahidi in his tafsir uh, that uh, Surah Al-Qalam was the second surah to be revealed uh, in, all of the book, uh, in all of the Qur'an. The very first surah was which surah? Surah Alaq, right? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. The very second one was this surah. Uh, the scholars are differences whether the whole surah was revealed in Makkah or not. Uh, majority of the scholars say the first, uh, the first 18 verses or first 16 verses were revealed in Makkah. And then the remaining of the verses, remain, remainder of this, of this surah was revealed in Medina. And that is typical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes reveals a part of the surah in Makkah and then he will complete the rest of the surah in Medina. That's normal. That is the way revelation happened in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or he would reveal a part of the surah now and then reveal the earlier part or the first part of the surah in Medina. So the Prophet sallallahu would then recite it in the right order uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala originally willed it. So ikhwati, this is a surah that uh, that contains the very early revelation to the Prophet ﷺ and commanding him to, uh, to be of those people that are the most upright. The beautiful thing about the surah is that it is about akhlaq and character. It is about upright character and upright akhlaq. And this surah deals with first of all about the upright character of Rasulullah and that the Prophet is not mad and that he is by Allah's blessings and mercy he is upon the highest and exalted character. And he is, as, as Aisha radiallahu anha said, Kana khuluqul Qur'an, his character was the Qur'an. Meaning everything that was going to be revealed was his character already. And so the Prophet was of the upright and the best of akhlaq and character. And the Qur'an was simply supporting the Prophet's akhlaq and character that was already there, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Prophet with. Then it moves on to talking about the, the opposite of the character of the Prophet which is the character of the Quraysh. How lowly, beastly these human beings were. How their kufr and their disgraceful attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger was exemplified in the way that they behaved with each other. And how their mannerism, their behavior, their uh, attitudes, their habits were so poor. They used to swear about anything. They would uh, withhold their money when people wanted a little bit. They would not give their wealth to the poor and needy and orphans. Uh, they would not feed anyone. They would, uh, they would, they would uh, insult each other. They would be so bad, they wouldn't just insult in behind someone's back. They would actually insult in someone's face, to someone's face. This is how bad they were. You know how when you, know, you, you call someone a coward when someone insults to, you, to, to your back. But imagine the person who is haughty and proud and arrogant enough to insult to your face. He is even more insulting and worse than that, isn't he? So Allah will talk about those people. He will also talk about those people who argue too much. People who are full of evil. And these were the Quraysh. People who were, who were in, inherently evil in their behavior. And who would love to argue and incessantly argue about anything and everything. So this is how the Quraysh were. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what He will do, He will brand these people on their faces. In one tafsir it is understood to mean Allah will cut their faces with, with a sword on their on their faces, the nose will fall off, or that they will be brandished, brandished on their nose, they'll be hit with a hammer on their face until the nose punches in. Sanasimuhu ala khurtum as Allah says, we will brand them so you will recognize who these people are. The worst of akhlaq, worst of character will be recognized on the day of judgment by how their faces look. They will be faceless, they will be noseless, and they will be brandished and smashed on their faces on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that those people who are of lowly and beastly character are going to be tested in this dunya just like Allah had tested this tribe of a people from Yemen. In Yemen there was a, a group of people, we don't know what, who their names were, what their identity was, but there was a tribe of a group of people who, whose father was a very wealthy man and they had left uh, behind date palm trees and his father used to give the right of the poor from that date palm. When the harvest used to come, he used to, he used to give some of the dates to the, to the poor. But the children became very haughty and proud and said, no, look, our children are too many, father is only one, we are now married, we have kids and too many kids to look after, we're not going to give any to the poor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how Allah punished them, how Allah destroyed their wealth because of this behavior. That if you behave like this brothers and sisters, if you behave like there is no haq of the poor on your wealth, Allah will similarly destroy your wealth one day when you are asleep. One day Allah will give you poverty and disgrace in your wealth, just like Allah gave to these people in Yemen. And Allah is going to talk about this in Surah Noon. Then thereafter, the middle part of the surah talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not judge the disbelievers like He will judge the believers. The believers will have a special judgment, whereas the disbelievers will have a special judgment as well. And the disbelievers, they think that they will have the same sort of treatment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah asks some questions, why do you feel that you despite having such poor akhlaq, poor mannerism, disbelieving in Allah and His Messenger being such such poor human beings to other human beings, do you expect that Allah will give you the best of treatment? What is your proof? Do you have a, a proof from Allah? Show us the book if you have. Or do you have any other gods other than Allah for which you can actually prove this? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the fact that these people, the epitome of, of, their, of their misguidance was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will ask them all to prostrate, but they will not be able to prostrate. Why not? Why will they not be able to prostrate? They won't be able to prostrate because they never prostrated in this dunya. So if you don't pray in this dunya, if you miss your salah, you will not be able to, you will not be able to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is a very severe warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to everyone here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you will be singled out on that day. That if you did not prostrate in this dunya, you will not be able to prostrate to Allah on the day of judgment. So the fact that you're a hypocrite will be seen by everyone on that day. When all the Muslims will be prostrating to Allah and everyone else will not be able to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. Then finally the Quran finishes off by talking about why is it finally therefore that disbelievers today do not listen to Rasulullah sallallahu Is it because Muhammad sallallahu is asking them for wealth and money? Is it because the Prophet is asking them for money for teaching this Quran? Is it because of this that they have a huge debt which they can't repay for which they can't listen to Muhammad Is there a membership fee of being a Muslim, right? That you can't pay is too, too hefty. The membership fee like golf course fees for example too expensive. Or is it because of something else? And so the Prophet ﷺ says, Be patient with them O Muhammad ﷺ. But do not be impatient like Yunus ﷺ was. How Yunus ﷺ became impatient while people were not accepting his message. So he ran away. He boarded a ship and the ship was about to be shipwrecked. So they put out lots on who should be thrown overboard. And then the lot of Yunus came. And Yunus ﷺ was thrown overboard. Then a whale came and ate up Yunus ﷺ. And so Allah says, Had Allah not had mercy on Yunus, Allah would have thrown, Allah would have made the whale eat up the body of Yunus and then throw out whatever corpse was remaining from the body of Yunus on a naked shore. And people would have seen the body of Yunus and how Allah does to someone who is hasty and who is, who is not patient with his people. Meaning, Ya Ikhwati, my brothers and sisters in Islam, all my Muslim brothers and sisters over here who are calling other people to Islam and calling their families to become more righteous or you're telling your, your parents to practice Islam or your, your husband to pray or father to uh, stop taking riba, whatever else. Don't you dare leave the path of calling to the path of Allah. Don't you dare for one second say, I've, oh, that's enough, I've had it, I've lost my patience with you. Because if you do that, the same fate that was going to 
touch Yunus alayhi salatu salam will touch you as well. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on you so long as you call to his path and are patient in it. The result is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The result is up to Allah. So you should not be of the people who are impatient and say, I've called them to the path, Allah's path. They're not listening, so I'm not gonna, that's it. I'm not going to bother anymore. No, you have to bother. You have to persist. You have to persist, persist and continue until your final breath. Until your final breath. Otherwise, the fate that was going to touch Yunus will touch you as well. And this is the warning Allah gave you, Rasulullah Sallallahu Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm warning you, be patient in this path. And even if it takes 13 years of your life calling them to the path before you get Medina, even if it takes longer than that, persist on calling to this path, otherwise the fate which will touch Yunus will touch you as well. This is Surah Al-Qalam, one of the first surahs to be revealed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much wisdom, so much beauty. Let's take it inshallah and try and follow with every sentence inshallah the meaning of it. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful to all creation. Ar Rahman meaning most merciful to all creation. Ar Rahim meaning specifically merciful to human beings. Ya'khwati, some of you are following on your mobile phones. Please ensure that your mobile phones uh, is on flight mode when you do so. So no phone calls, please, uh, at, that, at that point, inshallah. Concentrate on the Quran. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَعْمِهُ لَهُ وَأَنْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Quran has been recited, then listen to it and pay attention so that you may have mercy. The scholars of, 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 of Islam state that when the Quran is being explained and it is being recited, if you do not pay attention to it, Allah will not have mercy on you, Allah will punish you. So, Ikhwati, just be very wary of this. This is the Quran. This is not maths or science or English I'm explaining, right? This is the Quran. So, deal with it in a way you would not deal with anything else. Right. Noon. What does the word noon mean? Scholars have different meaning, uh, different reasons for what, what the word noon means. Uh, however, uh, the, the meaning which Ibn Kathir rahimullah, states, there are 12 different opinions of what these Alif, Lam, Meem, Ha, Meem, Ayn, Meen, Saad, uh, Noon, Qaf, what do these words mean? 12 different opinions of them, the strongest opinion as, uh, as Ibn Kathir rahimullah, states is that the words which are incomprehensible like these letters do not mean anything but the Quran. So you will find the very next uh, ayah right after it is something referring back to the Quran. So Alif, Lam, Meen, Dhalika Al-Kitabu, yeah, that is the book, Qaf, Wal Quran Al-Majid, right? So can you see how after every word, after every of these letters, the very next verse refers back to the Quran. Yeah? Meaning, in the Quran. So Allah always refers back to the Quran after these letters. So therefore, the letters mean the Quran. Okay? Some said these are different names of the Quran. Some said no, it's referring back to the words of the Quran. Whatever it is, but they all refer back to the Quran. As a result, Ikhwati, today, some people misunderstand Yasin to mean it's the name of Rasulullah. No, it's not. Who said so? Yasin is not the name of Rasulullah. This is a mistake. It's a fallacy. It's a, it's a, it's misjudgment. Yasin is one of the names of the Quran. Yasin wal Quran al Hakim. Yeah. So it refers back to the Quran. It does not refer back to Rasulullah. So let's come back and inshallah learn our. Uh, our deen so that we practice it correctly. And I swear by the pen and that which writes down. Which pen? The pen which is the first pen that was that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wrote down the Lawh al Mahfuz. Yep. What is the Lawh al Mahfuz? It is a book that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that contains every single thing that will be there until the day of judgment. So all of Qadr, all of the knowledge of Allah is written down. As Imam al Tahawi rahimullah says. He says Allah ordered the pen to write down his knowledge. The knowledge of Allah was written down in Lawh al-Mahfuz. So therefore, the Injil, the Torah, all the books of the Prophets, the Quran was also written down in Lawh al-Mahfuz. How many books are there? How many books? There are no less than 124,000 books. Every single Prophet was given a book. Every prophet was given a book. It's not like only 10 books or 5 books or 25 books. No. The difference between a messenger and a prophet is not that a messenger has a book and a prophet does not have a book. That's not true at all. Rather, prophets were given books as well. The revelation that was given to them was a book. And so, no less than 124,000 books. All of them destroyed except one book, which is the Quran. Yeah? And I swear by the pen and that which it writes down. What does the pen write down? The Qadr of Allah. 
the knowledge of Allah and all, of course the Quran as well and all the other books that the, the Quran had written down before it was even revealed. So the Quran is the uncreated word of Allah. It was written down even before the words were revealed for a particular situation. Okay. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. You are not, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bi ni'mati rabbika. Bi ni'mati rabbika mean, mean, meaning by the blessings of your Lord. Bi majnoon. You are not a madman by the blessings of your Lord, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. So it is by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu was not mad. And this is important because initially when Jibreel came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and hugged him in the, in the cave, he thought he was becoming mad. Isn't that right? Because he went to Khadija radiallahu anha and said, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me up. I think I'm becoming mad. Yeah? I think I'm becoming mad. I've seen something. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember this surah was the very second surah to be revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first 16 verses was the very first surah to be revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, no, you are not by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a mad man. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. وَإِنَّكَ وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ And for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is ajran, a huge reward, غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Never ending. وَإِنَّ لَكَ Verily for you, ajran is a reward. غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Meaning never ending. What does that mean? It means, uh, the scholars of, of, of Islam explain, غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ to mean many things. غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ meaning limitless. Ghayr Mamnoon means never ending, meaning it continuously flows. Ghayr uh, Mamnoon means uh, there is no, uh, um, no measure. Meaning when you give someone, you measure, okay, I'll give you how much oh, the brother is in need. And you look, you know, in your pocket, you look for, okay, I'll give him 10, ten ringgit. And you start counting one ringgit, two ringgit, three ringgit, and then you give him 10. So the whole point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give without any, any counting at all. Yeah? Without any counting at all. This is Ajran Ghayr Mamnoon. So, Ya Khwati, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a reward that is never ending. Amazing, isn't it? The Prophet Sallallahu has a reward that is never ending. And how does the Prophet have a reward never ending? Well, first of all, he guided us to Islam. So, therefore, he is the first person to have started the Sunnah, which is all of the acts of Islam. So, therefore, everyone who does whatever he does, gets the Prophet gets a reward. So if we pray, the Prophet gets a reward. You know how people say today, can I uh, gift my, my uh, uh, worship to Rasulullah You know how people say that? Can I say, oh Allah, this recitation of the Quran, give it to Rasulullah So we say to these people saying, Akhil Kareem, Zakallah uh, for your good intention. But already the Prophet is getting the reward of your reciting the Quran. Because he is the one who guided you to recite the Quran. He is the one who the Quran is revealed through. So therefore, the ayah is very, the, the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who guides to someone, is the same as the one who does it, right? So because we are fasting, our Prophet is getting the reward of that fast. So can you imagine 1.5 billion people fasting today? The Prophet is receiving the reward of it. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. So, ikhwati, you must be of the first of the people to guide people to Islam. And the last of the people to sin. And that is what the scholars say. Why? Because the, the earlier you do your good deed, the more people that see you doing the good deed, the more ajr you have written in, in your name. So if I have explained this, this surah to you, for example, and I do it early on in my life, and for the rest of your life you love this surah and you recite it in your recitation, you know what? I get the ajr of it, inshallah. And if you then learn it and you go back and teach others, you will get that ajr early on too. Yaqwati, this is the beautiful thing. Inna laka la ajran ghayra mabnoon. For you is never ending reward because of the, of the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was the first of the people to teach us and because of the difficulty the Prophet ﷺ will go through. We know that the Prophet ﷺ will go through multiple difficulties in this dunya. He said in the authentic narration on his deathbed, which was reported in, his, in the Sunan of Al Bukhari, he said, Wallahi, I feel double the pain than anyone on this dunya. Double the pain. So who is the one who has the worst pain in this dunya? The Prophet ﷺ was tested by Allah to feel double the pain. Double the pain of the worst person who had the worst pain in this dunya. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith in Muslim and others, he said, Verily a person is tested according to the level of his iman. So therefore the Prophet's iman was so high, and that is why his test was so high, and that is why his reward is so high. 
as well. Inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. For you is never ending reward. Wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. And verily, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are upon exalted character. You are upon exalted character. Amazing, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acknowledging that Prophet ﷺ is upon exalted character. In one authentic narration, it is reported that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that Rasulullah <coughs> never ever heard anyone from his family or his guests or anyone on the street asking him from anything except that he said, Labbaik, meaning I hear you, I'm coming. Meaning I hear you, I'm coming, I'm going to help you. He never ever said no to anyone. He never said, Oof. He never said, Dad, right Yusuf? He never said, Dad. He never said, Mom, not now. Mom, later. No, he never said anything like that. Okay? He went ahead and he did it straight away. Yeah? And this is one of the characteristics Allah loved. Another characteristic that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved is Aisha radiallahu anha explained another authentic narration from her in Tabarani and others is that Aisha radiallahu anha said that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was always the one who gave back more whenever he was, whenever someone, someone did something good to him. So if I give you 10 ringgit, the Prophet always gave back 12 more. He never gave back the same. He would always give back more. Okay? On top of that, the Prophet ﷺ was always honorable to his guests. On top of that, he never ever wronged anyone if someone wronged him. If someone wronged him, he never ever reciprocated by asking for that wrong. He always did good back to them or he forgave them. Right? Yehudi, ask yourself this question. Sometimes we are not of that high level of akhlaq and character. We should be. Like our Prophet ﷺ, always forgiving, always giving back more, always ensuring that we, uh, uh, always ensuring that we are at the beacon and the and the call of all those people who need our help. This is the beautiful akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa inna kala ala khuluqin azim. Verily, you are upon exalted character, exalted character. Yep. In one authentic narration, it was reported that Ibn Abbas radiallahu taala anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu did everything that pleased Allah. And stayed away from everything that Allah hated. So, Ikhwati, in the authentic narration, the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, Shall I not, shall I not tell you uh, that which will save people the most on the day of judgment from Jahannam and will enter the most people into Jannah more than anything else? And the people said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. So he said, Good character. Good character. The one that will save you the most on the day of judgment, Ikhwati, from Jahannam is good akhlaq. Good manners, good manners. In one authentic narration, he said, Shall I not tell you how you can achieve the middle part of Jannah, and the highest part of Jannah? And in this authentic hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet, the, the Sahaba said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Have good akhlaq, have good manners. In another authentic hadith, he said, Shall I not tell you that which is more rewarding in the eyes of Allah than fasting all day and praying all night in my masjid in itikaf? In itikaf, in the masjid, the Rasulullah says, fasting all day and praying all night. And the people said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, have good manners. Good manners. So, ikhwati, good manners is the highest and the most important thing, Ya ikhwati. And that is why Rasulullah said in an authentic hadith. He said, I have not been sent illa li makarim al-akhlaq, except to perfect good manners. That's it. That's it. Ya ikhwati, we have to uplift our akhlaq with every single person. We have, to, we have to uplift our akhlaq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that Allah is watching every time. Knowing that Allah is watching us right now. The face we make. Allah watches our facial expressions. What is the proof Allah watches facial expressions? Look, Allah revealed a surah in the Quran, which is Abasa wa Tawalla. He turned away and frowned. He turned away and frowned. Allah, re Allah revealed a surah in the Quran about the frowning of Rasulullah Meaning Allah watches your facial expressions, ya ikhwati. How you behave, your wife asks you for something, you do, you do this. Allah notes it that you frowned at your wife. Your mother asks you something and you, and you made a small sound with your mouth. Allah notes it down. Allah is watching everything, Ya Khuti. Yeah, everything Allah is watching. Subhanallah. So let's make a, a, a very concerted effort to perfect our akhlaq and character. Let's make a very concerted effort to perfect our akhlaq and character. Let's be the same to those who praise us and those who dispraise us. Let's be the same to those who benefit us and those who hurt us. Let's be the same, forgiving, kind, merciful. And that is how the Prophet was. A sign of ikhlas and sincerity is that a person 
A person is the same towards those who love him and those who hate him. Is that he is the same towards those who praise him and those who dispraise him. Right? And that is a sign of insincerity. They will see, O Muhammad Sallallahu and you will see. What will they see and you will see? When? On the Day of Judgment and when they die. What will they see and what will you see? Who amongst you is the one who has fitna? What does maftoon mean? Maftoon means the one who is touched by fitna. So who is the one who is touched by fitna? A shaitan. So the scholars of the sea said, on the Day of Judgment, O Muhammad, it will become clear who. Is it you? And at the time of death, it will become clear who is the one who is a real shaitan in this dunya. Is it you who is the shaitan lying against Allah? Or is it them? They are the ones who are shayateen that lie against Allah and, and, and stop everything good. Indeed, you will see and they will see of Muhammad Sallallahu who amongst you is the one who is the true devil uh, and who is the one who is a real saint, who is Rasulullah Sallallahu or is it the shayateen? Inna rabbaka hu a'lamu biman dalla an sabili. Inna rabbaka, verily your Lord, a'lamu, is most aware, is more knowledgeable. Biman dalla, as for the one who strays away. Biman dalla, dalla is to be dal, to stray away. An sabilihi from his path. Wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadeen. And he is most aware of the one who is most guided. So do not ever associate and attribute to yourselves piety, ikhwati. Allah knows who is pious, Allah knows who is righteous. Don't ever say, I have good intentions. No, no, don't ever say that. Always judge yourself on your action. Do not judge yourself on your intention. Allah knows your intention. You should doubt your own intention. You should doubt your own intention. But never ever, never ever judge yourself to be of those who are righteous. And that is why the scholars of Islam, Ibn Kathir Rahimullah says in his tafsir, it is disliked by the scholars of Islam to name your children names that denote piety. It is disliked to name your children names that denote piety. Like what? Saifullah, Salahuddin, Shamsul Islam, Bahrul, yani Iman. Yani, you know, I'm just bringing up names that I find most amazing. Shaykhul Islam. Yes, Salam. Yani, I still remember uh, in my class, a friend was telling me that there was this teacher, uh, you know, in, in Medina University when I was there, uh, they have uh, tahdeer, which is uh, they go through the names of who's attending, who's not attending. Uh, so that if you don't attend, you know, more than 90%, then you can't sit the exam. Okay, so they make you make sure you attend. So they take tawfiq, hadar, so you have to say hadar meaning I'm present, right? So they go through the names. So they were going through the names and then uh, uh, Muhammad, hadar, uh, uh, Yusuf, hadar, uh, tawfiq, hadar, Shaykh al Islam. <laughs> And this little Indian guy, right? He puts up his hand saying, Hadar, you know. <laughs> and it's true, isn't it? In our countries, in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, they love to name the people with these names, right? Shaykhul Islam. And so the Shaykh looks at Shaykhul Islam and then looks at this little guy saying, Hadar. And then he says, Sanara, Sanara, meaning, we shall see, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see if you're Shaykhul Islam or not. <laughs> so, Yahuti, the whole point is don't be of those people who, who attribute. Piety to yourself, Allah knows whether you're pious or you are non pious. Okay? Fala tuti'il mukaddibin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fala tuti'il mukaddibin. Don't, O Muhammad sallallahu and O Muslimin, do not follow the liars. Do not follow the liars. Who are the mukaddibin? Yesterday we said mukaddibin are synonymous with, with kafirin, right? Mukaddibin, the liars, are synonymous with kuffar. That's why you should never call someone a liar unless that person is actually is a kaddab. Yeah? Or a total liar, a total liar. If a person lies, makes a mistake, saying, you're speaking a lie. But don't call the person a kathab, because a kathab is synonymous with a kafir in the Quran. And you will find in all of Juz Amma, Juz Tabarak, you will find kathib being used synonymously with, with, with kufr. Okay? فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ So do not follow the liars, Allah says. فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Do not follow the liars. وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ They wish, O Muhammad, لَوْ if only to the Hinu, if you were to leave the path for you the Hinu, so they would become easy on you. They wish that you would become soft and gentle in Islam, so that they would become soft and gentle. They wish that you would mellow your message, so that they would also mellow down in their in the hatred of you. What do they just wish they would lead, that you would you could you would stop calling to this path? In the same way, Yahuti, 
our enemies, the enemies of Islam and Muslim in today, this is the same thing. They wish we left this path. They wish that we stop calling to this stuff and calling to Islam and whatever else. Because, you know, and then if they did that, then they would go back to their, mis- their miserable ways. They wish that we would leave this path, ya khuti. What do law to the hinu? What does it mean? Therefore, means don't give them what they want. Don't you ever be easy on your deen. Take your deen seriously. Don't mellow out. Don't take it lightly. Don't consider Islam to be something which is easy. There's nothing called a practicing Muslim or non-practicing Muslim. A Muslim is Muslim. That's it. He's practicing. That's it. There's no non-practicing Muslim at all. That is a kafir. That person is a kafir. He's a kafir. A person who does not practice Islam is not a Muslim at all. That person is synonymous with with disbelief in a kafir. Someone who doesn't pray, someone who doesn't fast. So, Yehwati, people want you to become Muslim by name, but not by practice and action. Rather, we say, Allah says, What do law to the hinu for you the hinun? They wish that you would mellow out, so they would mellow out. We say, No, we will never mellow out in our deen, so that they will never ever leave the path as well. What do law to the hinu for you the hinun? Wala tuti' and do not follow. Allah is warning us and telling us, Wala tuti' do not follow. Tuti' uh, means do not follow. Kull halaf mahin. Every single halaf mahin. What is halaf? What does mahin mean? Do not follow the halaf. Halaf is the one who does a lot of half. What is half? Half is swear. So halaf is someone who always swears. Wallahi, 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 billahi, tallahi. Have you seen someone who swears all the time? Wallah, I did it. Wallah, I didn't eat it. Hi, Yusuf. People swear a lot, isn't it? Unfortunately, it's very, very prevalent in the Arab culture. Wallahi, ya Shaykh, wallahi. They swear a lot. Do not be of those people who swear by Allah a lot. Because Allah is huge. Allah is great. Allah is magnificent. Only take the name of Allah and swear by Him on some very, very significant issues. Not at every simple thing. Did you eat it? Wallahi, I ate it. Did you, did you eat it? Wallahi, I didn't eat it. So why did you have to swear by Allah by saying that you ate or didn't eat? I don't know. And people are like that. Believe me. Sometimes people swear a lot. Allah says, وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ Maheen means insignificant human being. So Allah considers every halaf to be insignificant. Meaning, if you are of those who are careless with your swearing, then Allah will consider you to be an insignificant human being. So do not be of those people who swear too much. Wallahi, ballahi, tallahi. Okay, do not be of those people. Because Allah considers you insignificant. Then Allah says, Hammaz. Hammaz in Masha in bin Amin. Hammaz, what does Hammaz mean? Hammaz is the opposite of Lammaz. What is Lammaz? Lammaz is someone who swears at you behind someone's back. Yeah, so he comes to his friend and he swears at you and mocks you behind your back. That's called a Lammaz. Hammaz, on the other hand, is someone who is haughty and proud enough to swear at you to your face. You're a fool, you know that? You're an idiot, you know that? You know, someone who swears at you to your face. Okay? Like a bully. Yeah? So that is a, is a, is a hammaz. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ do not, do not follow every swearing in significant human being that keeps on swearing by Allah all the time. And hammaz, the one who scorns at people's faces. مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِينٍ The one who walks around spreading tales. Masha means the one who walks around. بِنَمِينٍ With what? What does he walk around with? Nami means, means namima. He walks around with namima and spreading tales. Okay, everyone? So don't follow though every insignificant swearer, nor the one who scorns at your face, the bully, nor the one who is walks around with namima, walks around by spreading tales. Okay, everybody? Masha in bi namim. Manna illil khayr. Manna means the one who yamna, the one who stops. Manna illil khayr, the one who stops the khayr, stops the good from spreading. Mu'tadin athim, the one who transgresses. Mu'tadin is the one who does itidad, which is to spread, which is go beyond the boundaries. Okay, the one who transgresses the boundaries, athim, the sinful one. So do not follow every insignificant swearer, or the one who scorns to your face, or the one who walks around spreading tales, or the one who stops every good from happening, or the one who transgresses the limits, or the ones who sins all the time. Amazing, isn't it? In just a few verses, Allah has condensed all of the injunctions of the bad akhlaq that people have, isn't it? Manna ilil khair, the one who stops the khair, and, and the tafsir of the Quran mentions manna ilil khair means also the one who, when someone asks him for some small good, 
he doesn't give it. Oh, can I just borrow your phone? I just need to make a very quick phone call. My credit has run out. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, okay, you can call it, but don't call uh, international. I said, come on, huh? he's not going to call international, he's going to call his wife. Just two minutes away, one ring it, man. And so the one who does not give that is called manna'il lil khayr, the one who stops even a small amount of good and khayr. So Allah considers these people to be insignificant. The one who stops every khair or even the small amount of khair from happening is a manna lil khair. Mu'tadin athim, the one who transgresses the limits, athim, the sinful one. Utul lin, what is utul? Utul means the one who is shadid al khalq, say al khuluq. What does that mean? The scholars that have seen men shadid al khalq means the guy who is very big. Imagine him and me who's really big and fat and tall. Right? But despite his being so big and fat and tall, his akhlaq is like a little mouse. Okay? A bit like an ogre. Big, fat, and tall, but his akhlaq is like an insignificant small human being. Okay? And that is what, what an utul is. Utulin ba'da dhalika zanim. On top of that, meaning he is an utul, on top of that he is zanim. What is zanim? Zanim is someone who he says he is from, but he is not from. Zanim means, means the child of zina. Also, Zanim also means someone who attributes himself to someone, but he is not from that. Meaning that the Quraysh, they were Utul, they were big people, right? But the akhlaq were like insignificant mice, right? On top of that, they used to attribute themselves to people who they were not from. Who did they attribute themselves to? They said, we are the children of Ismail. Isn't that what they said? Allah says, no, you're not the children of Ismail. Why? Because the children of Ismail are like their father. Beautiful akhlaq, beautiful character. So the Prophet had right to call him such children of Ismail, but the Quraysh had no right. Because just because you are from that person doesn't make you from that person. Yeah? Just because you're from that person doesn't make you from that person. You also have to imitate and emulate that person's akhlaq and character, isn't it? The, the Quraysh, for example, used to say, we are from the children of Ibrahim. No, you're not. Ibrahim was an honorable man. He was a just man. He was a prophet of God. He was upon Tawheed. You Quraysh, you are idolaters. You are bad akhlaq, bad human beings, bad examples of human beings. Right? And that's why Allah calls them Utullim ba'da dhalika zanim. Zanim means that they attribute themselves to who they are not from. Right? And so, ikhwati, this is how the arrogant people are today. Me, I'm an honorable human being and you are insignificant. So Allah considers him Utul because he is big and haughty. I'm proud, but his, his akhlaq is so small, and he's attributing himself to being from a righteous family or a pious family, but he actually, his akhlaq is completely different to that. So Allah says, do not follow the Hallaf in Maheen. Don't follow the Hamas, the one who scorns to your face, or the Masha'in bin Amin, the one who walks around carrying tails. Do not follow, uh, do not follow the Manna'il lil khayr, the one who stops the good from happening in this dunya, or the Mu'tadin, the one who transgresses limits. Like the man who dresses like the woman, and the woman who dresses like the man. The one who transgresses limits, the one who smokes, the one who listens to music, the one who does sins openly, transgresses limits, a theme, the open sinner. The one who is sinfully open to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On top of that, he is, he is big in his creation, he is big in his body, but his akhlaq is so small. On top of that, he is zanim, meaning he attributes himself to something that he is not. Why does he do that? Because Allah says, why? He does this, he behaves like this, because Allah has given him mal, wealth, and children. That's why. That's why he is bad. Because he thinks he has wealth and children, so nothing can touch him. He thinks he has wealth and children, so he is loved by Allah. Or somehow he is of a higher status. He forgets the love that wealth and children are a test from Allah. They're not a sign that Allah loves you. They're a sign that Allah is testing you. Right? They're a sign that Allah is testing you. So, ikhwati, the reason why they are bad akhlaq and bad character is because they have more children and more wealth. And this is true. Today, children and wealth make a person arrogant and haughty and proud and make them bad akhlaq. More, more often than not. Very few people do you find humble and meek even though they are wealthy. Very few people. And they are the God-fearing ones. Yeah? But most people are haughty and proud because they have children and wealth. When my signs are being recited to him, ayatuna, my signs, which is the Qur'an, 
when my signs are being tutla alayhi, meaning recited to him, they say, qala asatirul awwaleen. Asatirul awwaleen means what? The, the suhuf of the people of the past, tales of the past, stories of the old. Yeah? As they say, Islam is like an old, old religion, old stories. Give us something new, give us something modern. Asatirul awwaleen. So what does Allah say? Allah says, finally, Sana Sibuhu Al Al Khurtum. I will of a surety smash his face on the day of judgment. Sana Simuhu means I will smash it, smash, meaning brand. So so uh, so Sana uh, Sanam is to take a big hammer, right? Like you know the big hammer that has a flat surface? Smash like that. So when you go doom like that, it's like a smashing, it's to is to brand. So Allah says, I will take his face. And I will smash his face on the day of judgment until his nose is smashed into his face. And there will be a brand, there will be a, a, a sign on his face saying that this guy is the one who is the one who, who behaved in this way. In another, in other narration, the scholars of Tafsir say that Sanasimuhu means Allah will take a, a sword and cut and slice his face until his nose falls off and all his, all his skin falls off his face. And, and that is how his face will be branded on the Day of Judgment. Another tafsir of Sanasimu al Khurtum says that Allah will burn his face with fire until his face has become charcoal black with fire. And this will happen on the day, on the plane of judgment before he's thrown into fire. So Allah swears, I will of a surety Sanasimu al Khurtum. I will of a surety brand him on his Khurtum. Khurtum means nose, but the scholars of tafsir say that when Allah mentions one part of the body, he means the whole thing. So when he says, Farqa Umar Raq'in, do ruku with those who do ruku, he doesn't just mean ruku, he means salah. Right? So in the same way, when Allah means khurtu, meaning nose, he doesn't just mean nose, he means the whole face. Allah will brand. So, ikhwati, be very wary of behaving like this. Allah will brand the faces of those people who are a poor akhlaq on the day of judgment in this way. Sanasimuhu ala khurtu. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the story of the people of Yemen, of that family from Yemen. Remember I told you? of that family from Yemen that misbehaved. So Allah says, Inna balawnahum. Of surety we tested them, meaning we will test them. Meaning Allah will test those people who are disbelievers in this dunya before the akhirah. And those people who are of bad akhlaq, Allah will test them. Inna balawnahum kama balawna. We will test them just like we tested ashab al-jannah. The possessors of the jannah. Jannah here does not mean jannah. Jannah here means gardens, because garden, like a small garden, can be called a jannah as well in Arabic. Tama balawna, we will test them as we tested the ashab al jannah, as we tested the, the people of the jannah, of that garden. Which garden? The scholars of Islam say that it is about five miles outside of Sana'a. Sana'a, which is the capital of Yemen, about five miles north of Sana'a was a small garden that used to belong to an old man who was a Muslim man, yeah, and he was Muslim. And this, these are all Muslim, by the way. The story is of a family which is Muslim in origin, okay? And they were Muslim, meaning they were Christians, but they were followers of Jesus Christ, but original Christians were all Muslim, right? And from them were people who, uh, who uh, this, this old man who was very righteous, he used to have a huge garden, and the garden used to have lots of crops and lots of uh, rivers uh, and lots of cattle in a huge garden. Uh, massive garden from which he used to get harvest many times a year and then he used to divide up the harvest between those people who are working on the on the crops and the poor people in the town and the rest for his family then he passed away when he passed away the inheritance went to his uh, his children and when his children when, when the inheritance went to the children the children said no we can't give charity anymore so they started to behave like the manna lil khayr so allah gives you an example of the manna lil khayr so look at the examples. He says, Inna balawnahum kama balawna. Verily we will test them. Just like we tested Ashab al-Jannah, the people of that garden. Id aqsamu, when they swore to themselves, la yasrimunnaha musbihin. Meaning they swore to each other. I swear what we're going to do is tomorrow, we're not going to give to the, to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the poor people. We're going to go musbihin, meaning very early for sabah. Musbihin meaning very early on, we're going to be very early waking up right, right after uh, the Fajr Adhan. We're going to wake up and go very quietly at night and go and cut off all the, all the um, fruits from the trees. And we're going to gather them all for ourselves, not give any to the, to the poor at all. So they swore to themselves, they will go and they will do the harvest in the morning. Meaning, 
and they did not say inshallah. Okay, another one, another meaning of wala yustathnoon means, and they did not say, and we will give some to the poor. Meaning they intended in the heart, all the wealth will be for theirs, not for the poor. So ikhwati, you can't do that. You can't be like that. You can't be of those people who say, you know what, I'll earn, oh how much am I earning? 100,000 100, ringgit a year? Oh 100,000 ringgit a year? MashaAllah, that's a lot of money. You go to your wife and say, what should we do with that money? Only 2.5 for zakat. No, you can't behave like that. You have to remember, the poor have a haqq on your wealth. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ مَعْلُومٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ And in their wealth is, an, is a portion well known for those who ask and those who are in need and the aqarib and the family members. So what does this mean, ya khuti? It means that you must know that from your wealth is an amount that is due for the poor beggars and for poor people out there. You must know that always. So when you now are looking at your wealth, you might be deciding how much zakat, 2.5%. Don't be a miser and just give 2.5%. The Christians give 20%. What do you give? You should also give a minimum of 20. In fact, it was a sunnah of the Sahaba that they used to give 20% minimum, whoever could, minimum whoever could. But 20% they would give away. In fact, when they died as well in their inheritance, it was reported that in the inheritance will of Abu Bakr and Umar, they gave 20% of their wealth away. 20%. Always, always equity. Give a good portion of your wealth away and Allah will cause it to increase. Don't be a miser, just give zakat. Zakat is just the obligatory deed, obligatory portion. Give more than that away for the cause of Allah. Wala yastathnoon. And they did not put a portion for the poor. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ So a ta'if meaning a punishment from Allah. Ta'if meaning something that, that floats around in the sky. So here what is being referred to is a punishment that came from the sky. What was the punishment? Allah sent a meteor from the sky and burnt up the whole of the, of the, of the garden. Allah burnt it down from, with a meteor from the sky, subhanAllah. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ So a meteor came down from the sky, وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Whilst they were asleep, a punishment came down from the sky. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَسَّرِيمٌ So it became like total ashes. Meaning it totally burnt the whole garden down. It became kasarim. Sarim means something that's burnt and becomes like ashes. And you know when a, a, a wood plank is burnt, it's become like ashes and you know, and that's, that's called sarim. فَأَصْبَحَتْ kasarim. فَتَنَادَوْ musbihin. So they woke up in the morning and they called each other. تَنَادَوْ Meaning they called each other. musbihin Very early on. أَنِغْدُوا عَلَى حَرْثِكُمْ Let's go quickly and harvest. إِن كُنْتُمْ سَارِمِينَ إِن كُنْتُمْ, صار... إن كنتم صارمين. Quick, quick brothers, where are you? All you brothers, come on, come on, let's go and harvest. If indeed we're going to harvest today or not. Or we're going to delay it for another day. Come on, let's go, we're going to harvest today. فَانْتَلَقُوا So they went. فَانْتَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ What does that mean? فَانْتَلَقُوا So they all went together. يَتَخَافَتُونَ means quietly. Quietly, not making a single sound. يَتَخَافَتُونَ means being very, very wary to not make a sound at all. Okay? Meaning very quietly and secretly they went out of their town. Can you see how Allah is noticing everything? Ya salam, ya salam, ya salam. How can we think Allah is not looking? Allah is watching everything we do. Next time when you do something sinful, yeah, you're doing something sinful on your computer and you're looking, oh, is that brother looking or not? Quick, quick, quick. Oh, is that person looking or not? Quick, quick. You know, do something sinful. Allah is knowing you. Allah knows you. Allah knows everything you're doing. وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ So they went on their path, quietly, tiptoeing, so that no one else in the village knows about it. Allah يَدْخُلَنَّهَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ So that Allah يَدْخُلَنَّ And they told each other, don't let a single miskin person come to you today. One single person. They walked slowly so that none of the miskin, because you know what the miskin would do? If they went in the morning, and they took all their harvest materials and goods with them and they heard the sound, they'd wake up, oh, where are they going? Harvest? Oh, quickly, quickly, we'll go with them. Please, buy beta, do, pesa, do. You know, give us two pesa, you know? And so they didn't want that to happen, so they're quietly. Has this ever happened to you all? I'm sure it has. Has anyone gone to Makkah, Medina? When you see all these people begging, and what do you do? Quickly, quietly, go from the other side, so that they don't, huh? فَانْتَلَقُوا وَأُمِ تَخَافَتُونَ You've been doing it too, haven't you? Salam. Don't do it. Allah, Allah notices all of this, ya khuti. Okay, don't do this. Don't do this. I know that they may not be very eligible beggars. But the point is, ya khuti, never ever behave like this with the person who was poor. 
Someone who asks you, never say no. Our Shaykh used to say, never say no to a woman. Never say no to a woman. Because it may be that she's in need. And if she's in need, then she will have to then sell her body in order to feed her children. Never say no. And what is it? One ringgit? What's that going to do to you, Akhi? What's that? It's not going to ever harm you. So be of those people, Ya Akhwati, never say no to, uh, never to beggars. فَانْتَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ أَلَّا يَدَخُلَنَّهَا الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِسْكِينَ وَغَدَوْا عَلَى حَرْدٍ قَادِرِينَ And they went to their hard, meaning the harvest, قَادِرِينَ Meaning able, capable. Meaning they took all the tools with them, all ready, and, and, and bright and sharp in the morning to go and do the harvest. فَلَمَّا رَأُوهَا So when they saw, what did they see? They saw the gardens were all destroyed. فَلَمَّا رَأُوهَا قَالُوا They said to them, إِنَّا لَضَالُّونَ Oh no, we're destroyed. إِنَّا لَضَالُّونَ So they fell down on the ground. They grabbed their heads on their hands and they said, Oh no, we're destroyed. لَضَالُّونَ بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ Rather, we are the ones who have been prevented from the khair. Right? And they started crying and weeping. So, قَالَ أَوْسَطُهُمْ The best of them. The best in, in, in Islam is always called awsat, meaning the most moderate of them, the best of them. Said what? Qala awsatuhum. Alam akul lakum. Didn't I tell you, laula tusabbihun? Why didn't you thank Allah and praise Allah for this? Laula tusabbihun. Qalu subhana rabbina inna kunna zalimin. Just like everyone does. When the fitna strikes you, then you remember Allah. They say, subhana rabbina, glory be to Allah, inna kunna zalimin. Verily, we were wrongdoers. They realize their own mistake. Inna kunna dhalimeen. Fa aqbala ba'duhum ala ba'diyyata la wa moon. So they turn towards each other. And look, they didn't take a lesson. They turn towards each other instead of blaming themselves. Who did they blame? Yata la wa moon, blaming each other. It's your fault. You, you maybe do it. You didn't. <laughs> it's your fault. You're the one who said we're not going to give to the, na- to, the, to the poor beggars. No, you're the one who said it. No, you're the one who said it. You know, and this is the way people are. A'udhu billah. Yeah, in regret. They turn towards anger and they try to blame anyone else but themselves. Okay? فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدِيَّةَ اللَّهِ وَمُونَ See how Allah is noticing everything? قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ They said, oh, woe to us, verily, we are the ones who transgressed. How did they transgress? Because they wanted to keep all their wealth to themselves, not give to the poor at all. إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ عَسَى رَبُّنَا أَن يُبْدِلَنَا خَيْرًا مِنْهَا it may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the situation to something better. Khayram minha, meaning better than this situation. Inna ila rabbina ragibun. Verily, we are seeking Allah's favor. We turn towards Allah and we turn towards repentance. What did Allah say? Kada likal adab. In the same way is the punishment, O human beings. Meaning, be very wary. If you misbehave, and you behave in this way, kadalikal adab. In the same way, will the punishment of Allah touch you and meet you as well? Kadalikal adab. Meaning, if you behave in the same way with your wealth, by being miserly and holding back, not giving in the path of Allah, in the same way will punishment touch you. In kadalikal adab, wala adabul akhirati akbar. And know that if you think this punishment, this dunya is severe, then know that the punishment of the akhirah is akbar, is even greater. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only they knew. Allahu Akbar. What a story, isn't it? What a story. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the disbelievers or the people who are haughty and proud that despite listening to all of this, they feel that they have some sort of haqq or right over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be treated special, in a special way. So what does Allah say? إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ So know, O people, verily for those muttaqeen, those who are truly God-fearing. Is there any muttaqeen over here? If you consider yourself muttaqeen, you should ask Allah for death right now. If you cannot ask Allah for death right now, then you know you're not a muttaqeen yet. Okay, let me make it very clear. And that is what Allah says in the Quran. Allah challenges the Jews. Okay, that if indeed you have a straight away guaranteed pass to Jannah, then ask Allah for death. And so for the human beings as well. If you are sure that you're going to Jannah, then you should ask Allah for death. You should. But the reality is, no one can claim to be a muttaqeen. No one can claim to be a muttaqeen. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, he said, if I knew Allah had accepted even one of my prostrations, I would be the happiest person on this earth. If I knew Allah accepted one of my prostrations, I would be the happiest person on this earth. And then he said, why? Because 
Allah only accepts from the muttaqin. Allah only accepts from the muttaqin. So ikhwati, when you pray, don't think Allah is accepting your prayer. When you're fasting today, don't think Allah is accepting it. No. You know, you keep thinking that when you do hajj, alhamdulillah, Allah accepted it. No. It, it, it doesn't mean Allah accepted it. When you do something like salah or zakat or hajj or psalm or whatever it is, it means you simply did what you're meant to do. But it does not mean Allah accepted it. Acceptance will only happen if Allah is happy with you and He accepts your taqwa and your fear, for, fear of Him. Okay? And that is when, when it is accepted, that is when Allah will give you Jannah. Otherwise, just doing something doesn't entitle you to Jannah at all. Because you still have one more thing. That's why the scholars say there is something called doing an action which is called Ijza. And then something called Qabul, which is acceptance. Ijza means, if I pray four rakahs now, that's enough for my Asr prayer. So I don't have to pray another four rakah for my Asr prayer. But Qabul means acceptance of that Asr prayer. That's a level higher than Ijza. Ijza is just the lowest level. Above that is Qabul, acceptance. That's why you have to ennoble your whole deed with Taqwa. Otherwise, Allah will never accept your deed. Inna lil muttaqin inda rabbihim jannatin naim. Verily, with the muttaqin, with their Lord, will be the blessed Jannah. Afa naj'alul muslimin kal mujrimin. Shall we deal with the mujrimin, those who are sinful transgressors, like the muslimin, like those who are good people, muslimin, submitters to Allah? Ma lakum kayfa tahkumun? What is wrong with you? How do you judge? Am lakum kitabun fihi tadrusun? Do you have a book in which you are reading this? Inna lakum fihi lama takhayyarun That it is written in that book For you is whatever you ask for Whatever treatment you're asking for That book says that you will get it with Allah Am lakum aymanun alayna baligatun ila yawmil qiyamati Inna lakum lama takhayyarun Am lakum aymanun Or is, do you have a promise Alayna baligatun That is binding upon us Baligatun ila yawmil qiyamati That extends all the way till the day of judgment Anna lakum Inna lakum lama tahkumu that for you is whatever you ask for. Salhum ayyuhum bidalika zaim. Ask them of Muhammad sallam. Who amongst them will witness that they have some some promise like this? So ask yourself, Ikhwati, is there anyone here who has a promise from Allah that Allah will treat us however we want to be treated? Salhum ayyuhum bidalika zaim. Who asked them, oh, oh Muhammad, who is there amongst them that will <coughs> attest to this? Am lahum shuraka, or do they have a partner? Meaning another God. Yeah, shuraka meaning a partner with Allah. Or do they have another God? فَلْيَأْتُوا بِشُرَكَائِهِمْ إِنْ كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ So let them come with this partner, this other God, if indeed they're truthful, that this God will give them whatever they ask for. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ On that day when Allah will drop the hijab from his shin. What is shin? His lower limbs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that on that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal his shins to the people, to all of creation, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقٍ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ And they will be asked to prostrate, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate on that day. Ya akhwati, number of points of benefit from this verse. Number one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has a shin. That does not mean that we should think, okay, his shin looks like our shin. Okay, we should not think that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique, and so his shin is however he is. If Allah says he has a face, if Allah says he has a hand, that is how he is. And that is his uniqueness. So just like we can say the table has a hand, this table, this armchair has a hand, I'm resting on the, on the hands or the arms of the chair, right? In the same way human beings have an arm, in the same way a cat or a dog has an arm, in the same way Allah can have an arm, everything is befitting that, that creation. So this chair befits the chair, our hand befits us, the hand of a cat befits the cat, the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala befits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that make sense? Right. And so therefore never ever draw tashbih, meaning resemblance of something in your head. If you try to do that, seek, seek, seek uh, Allah's help to not make tashbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, laysa kamithin shay, he's not like anything that we know of. But if he says he has a shin, that he has a shin. So Allah says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ On that day, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show his shin to human beings and to creation, وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They will be called to prostrate. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate. خَاشِعَةً أَبْصَارُهُمْ As a result, their faces will be filled with fear. تَرْحَقُهُمْ ذِلَّةً And disgrace will cover their, their bodies. 
وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They used to be called to prostrate, meaning the adhan was given. They heard the adhan. They used to be called to pray. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They used to be called to pray. وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Whilst they were able to, but they did not do so. Ikhwati, what does this mean? Meaning if you fail to pray in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disgrace you and will punish you and throw you into Jahannam in the akhirah. The first thing the people will say why they entered Jahannam was, إِلَّا أَصْحَابَ الْيَمِينَ فِي جَنَّةِ يَتَسَأَلُونَ عَنِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا سَلَكُكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ They will ask the people who have entered Jahannam, مَا سَلَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What caused you to enter Jahannam? قَالُوا They will say, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We never used to pray. And that is why the scholars of Islam, <coughs> Imam Ahmed rahimahullah says, anyone who misses one prayer intentionally, then he has become a disbeliever. Anyone who misses one prayer intentionally. Our shaykh used to say, if you do not intentionally put the alarm clock on, then you have committed an act of shirk. Meaning alarm clock on for waking up for fajr. You know that you can't wake up for fajr without an alarm clock. You know you need an alarm clock to wake up. But you do not put the alarm clock on, then you have committed an act of shirk. Because salah is the only link between us and Islam. In the authentic narration in Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, He said in authentic hadith, what did he say? He said, what is between a person and Islam and Iman and shirk and kufr? And he, in that hadith he said, Ash-shirk al-kufr, this is authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim. Tarku salah is a leaving of salah. Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah said in the explanation of this hadith, he said, this hadith is the greatest evidence that leaving salah is kufr, is, is major disbelief. Why? Because he said, between Islam and al-shirk al-kufr, the shirk the kufr. And the shirk and the kufr cannot be anything, it cannot be a small shirk, small kufr, it must be the major shirk, the major kufr. And so that is why, this is the greatest evidence that leaving, is, leaving salah is kufr. In the fourth hadith, in the fourth hadith in Mustadrak of al-Hakim, it is reported that Abdullah bin Shaqiq radiallahu anhu said, in the authentic hadith, it's an authentic hadith, the fourth hadith in Musadraf of al-Hakim, he said that the companions of the Prophet did not used to consider the leaving of any action to be disbelief except salah. So if you leave your salah, ya ikhwati, you become a kafir. If you don't pray, you're a disbeliever. There's no excuse. Don't tell me, no, no, he's still a Muslim, but on the verge of leaving Islam, no, don't. Don't even come there. If you leave your salah, you become a kafir. For brothers and sisters out there, if your husbands don't pray, then your marriage is invalid. Why? Because then you, if you become a disbeliever, your marriage contracts are invalid. The point I'm trying to make is very serious. Very serious. If you do not pray, you cannot be a believer. You cannot be a Muslim at all. Okay? Very, very critical. Salah five times a day. This is it. It's the minimum requirement of, 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 of action. Minimum requirement of action. You must have this. Can't be lazy on it. You cannot be lazy. Okay. Also, Yehwati, don't be of those people who delay it intentionally. Who delay it intentionally. I'll, I'll pray, but I'll pray it later. I won't pray now, but I'll be in the university the whole day, but then I'll go home and then I'll pray the Rasa Maghrib Isha all together. Don't be like that. Laya Jews. There's a reason why there's surahs everywhere. It's so that you can pray in it. Okay. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ They used to be called to pray, but they never ever... Whilst they were, whilst they were safe. For Darni woman, you can be had al hadith. So leave me alone, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with those people who disbelieve in this hadith. Sanastadirijuhum min haythu la yaglamun. We will overtake them and punish them from where they never ever knew. Istidraj means when they didn't even know. Like for example, my brother Nash is there, or someone is creeping up from behind him and about to pounce on him from the back. Right? Does that make sense? That is called istidraj. So Allah says, leave me alone with these people who disbelieve in my, in, my, in my verses. I'll let them be, but I am crouching upon them. I'm about to overtake them and pounce upon them from where they never ever thought possible. سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ When they never ever thought. وَأُمْلِي لَهُمْ And I, I will be recited to him, to, to him when that punishment comes. إِنَّ كَيْدِي مَتِينَ in, Indeed, my, my plan is mateen, is very strong. Okay, meaning I have a plan for all of the people who disbelieve in me 
and my plan is very very strong it is sharp it will be enacted and it will be it will overtake all those people who do not listen to me am tas'aluhum ajran so what is wrong with them oh people what is wrong with them oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam am tas'aluhum ajran are you asking them for some for some ajr ajr meaning reward are you asking them for some money for a membership fee for becoming a muslim am tas'aluhum ajran fa hum min maghrabin muthqalun are you asking them them for some uh, ajr which is a reward or a money fahum min maghramin and because of the maghram maghram means because of the heaviness of the debt fahum muthqalun they are unable to pay because of the heaviness of that debt they are unable to pay because of that don't ask the meaning what is the meaning of that meaning that the asl is islam should be for free teaching islam should be for free shouldn't be asking money for it okay if they if you asking for money must be for a specific reason but here rasul sallallahu alaihi is being told you are a prophet of god you're not asking them for money for reciting the quran to them okay so guys give me 5 ringgit and i'll teach you surah qalam if you give me 10 i'll teach you i'll throw in surah haqqa with it as well i mean <laughs> does that make sense no this is ridiculous the quran and the sunnah was never ever taught for money right if you teach me i'll if you tell me two hadith that's two ringgit uh, three hadith uh, is uh, three ringgit okay <laughs> Okay, all right. So, am tas'aluhum ajran? Do they ask them for money? Is he asking them for wealth? Fahum min maghramin because of the heaviness of what he's asking, the the huge uh, price of that of that membership fee. Fahum muthqalun, they're unable to pay. Am indahum al ghaybu fahum yaktubun? Or is there a the knowledge of the unseen, so they know when they will die, so they will delay the acceptance of Islam until that point? Meaning, if you don't know. If you don't have a guarantee from Allah, nor do you know when you're going to die, ikhwati, why are you leaving till later to accept Islam and become a good Muslim? Am indakum ghaib? Do you know the knowledge of the unseen when you're going to die? Fahum yaktubun. So they are delaying their acceptance of, of Islam till that point. So Allah says, finally, fasbir. So be patient with them, O Muhammad. And I'm telling us as well, be patient, O human beings, O Muslimin. Be patient with the people you're doing da'wah to. Fasbir li hukmi rabbika. So be patient for the command of your Lord. Meaning, be patient for the point when Allah will make them a Muslim. Because the command is up to Allah. Their acceptance of Islam is up to Allah, not up to you. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ And do not be like, like who? كَصَاحِبِ hut, Like the companion of the whale. Allah called him companion of the whale. How amazing, how beautiful is the Quran. Instead of calling the food of the whale, Allah called him the companion of the whale. Okay? كَصَاحِبِ hut. Who was the companion of the whale? Yunus alayhi salatu When he called out in distress, one was in distress, it is reported in authentic hadith that he was chewed up by the whale in the belly and he could hear the heartbeat of the whale and he could hear the stomach as it is churning the food. And he called out at this point, Ya Allah. What did he say? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al So you must also say this, Ikhwati. In your times of sins, when you know you're distressed, and Allah's punishment is near, and you know something happened, and you know you deserved it. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Glory be to you, I was from the wrongdoers. Right? I was from the wrongdoers. Laula anta darakahu ni'matu min rabbihi. If it were not that the blessings from his Lord overtook him. What is the blessing? Ni'mah from Allah is forgiveness. So forgiveness from Allah is a ni'mah, ya khwati. Yeah? Lawla an tadarakahu ni'matun min rabbihi. So if it were not that the blessing from his Lord, which is forgiveness, overtook him. La nubidha bil ara. I would have caused the whale to eat him up and his corpse to be thrown out. Nubidha means to spit out. Okay? Nabith is to throw. So if I'm taking this and I'm throwing it like this, it's called nabadha. Okay? So, لَنُبِذَ بِالْعَرَى He would have been thrown out بِالْعَرَى Ara means what? Naked. And Al-Ara over here means naked, naked beach. لَنُبِذَ بِالْعَرَى I would have caused the whale to come near the beach and throw him, spit him out بِالْعَرَى on a naked beach. وَهُوَ مَذْمُومٌ Whilst there's a sister trying to ask for something, can you see if our sister needs any help? لَنُبِذَ بِالْعَرَى He would have been thrown out on a naked beach. وَهُوَ مَذْمُومٌ whilst he was sinful, meaning, had he not repented to Allah, and had he not persisted in his repentance, right, I would have caused the whale to eat him up, chew him up, and throw him up on a, on a naked, barren island, and then he would have been sinful, and people would have seen the sin that he had. Right, Ikhwati? 
And this is important. Why did Allah listen to Yunus? Can anyone tell me why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listen to Yunus? Because another part of the Quran, Allah says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَا لَبِتَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ What is Allah saying? Allah says in another part of the Quran, that had it not been that Yunus was from the Musabbihin, was from the those who used to worship me before in his times of ease, I would have left him in the belly of the whale in his time of distress, until the day of judgment. So when will Allah listen to your dua when you're in distress? Only if you praise Allah in your time of ease. Are you in ease now, Yahuti? You are. Then praise Allah now. Praise Allah copiously. Thank Him now. Because a day will come when Allah will test you and Allah will not listen to you if you did not praise Him in your time of ease. Allah will only listen to you if you praise Him in your time of, time of ease. Right? That's why, Yahuti, if you think in your time of distress, why is Allah not listening? Why is Allah not listening? Oh Allah, why are you not listening? It's because you never praised Him in your time of ease. That's why Allah will not listen to you in your time of distress. Look at Firaun. Firaun accepted Islam at the, just before in his time of distress, did he not? He says, Aman to be Rabbi Harun or Musa. Allah says, What? Al An, wa qad asayta min qablu wa kunta min al kafirin. Now you believe, O Firaun, when you used to disbelieve before and you were from, the, from, the, from those who transgressed in my path. So Allah didn't accept the Islam of Firaun, did he? But he accepted the tawbah of Yunus. Why? He accepted the tawbah of Yunus, alayhi wa sallam. Because he used to worship Allah in his time of ease. So Allah remembered in a time of distress. But Allah did not remember Firaun because Firaun used to disbelieve in Allah in his time of ease. So Allah did not listen to him in time of distress. So you, you remember this, Yahweh. Give charity, praise Allah a lot more in your time of ease because when a time of distress comes, so that Allah will listen to you at that point as well. We're about to finish. I apologize, we've gone over, over a little bit over time, but. Inshallah, it's such a beautiful surah. I just don't know how to, shut, how to cut it down. So Allah says, فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ So Allah chose him. Meaning because of his repentance, Allah chose him. Ijtaba means to, to choose. So Allah chose him. فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ So his Lord chose him. فَجَعَلَهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And made him from the righteous ones. So what happened? So when he went back, his people realized that, that oh my God, Yunus was missing. That means Allah's punishment is about to come now. That's why the Prophet left. So they all accepted Islam. So guess what? When he went back to his people, he realized all his people had also accepted Islam. So Allah gave him, Allah made him from the Salihin, Allah made him from the righteous ones. Allah say, <coughs> the second last verse, he says, kafaru, And it is almost that those who disbelieve, They're about to cause you to slip with their eyes. Have you seen people who hate the Muslims sometimes? They hate you so much. I don't know if you've seen this, but if you go sometimes to some countries in the West, you know, they're like, oh, who's this guy? This guy's a bearded Muslim. He's coming in our place. Well, just with their eyesight, they will cause you to slip. Like, you know, they look at you. They give you the looks, right, Saj? Have you had that? They give you the looks. With their looks, they're about to like, what, what are you doing? You're about to kill me with your laser vision? Yeah? Yeah, sometimes it's like that. You know, Wallahi, I remember in Australia, sometimes we go shopping with myself and my wife. My wife was, uh, uh, you know, uh, with hijab and everything. And these old ladies look at you like, you know, you know, you feel like turning to them and saying, are you, you know, are you, are you trying to kill us with your eyes? <laughs> so Allah is saying here that the, those who disbelieve are about to kill you with their eyes. They're about to cause you to slip with their eyes if they could. Because that's how much hatred they have in their eyes, right? When they hear the dhikr, which is the Quran. And they say, indeed, he is a majnoon. He is a madman. It is nothing but a reminder for all of mankind, all of creation. This Quran is not mad. This Quran is a reminder of all of mankind. Beautiful surah. Beautiful surah, Wallahi. Ya salam. Alhamdulillah. Let me recite it now in Arabic and now pay attention and see the impact it has on, on you when you understand now the Arabic. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Noon. Wal Qalami wa ma yasturoon. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. 
وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم فستبصر ويبصرون بأيكم المفتون إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين فلا تطع المكذبين ودوا لو تدهن فيدهنون ولا تطع كل حلاف مهين هماز مشاء بلميم مناع للخير معتد أثيم عتل بعد ذلك زنيم أن كان ذا مال وبنين إذا تتلى عليه آياتنا قال أساطير الأولين سنسمه على الخرطوم إنا بلوناهم كما بلونا أصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة إذ أقصموا ليصرمنها مصبحين ولا يستثنون فطاف عليها طائف من ربك وهم نائمون فأصبحت كالصريم فتنادوا مصبحين أن اغدوا على حرثكم إن كنتم صارمين فانطلقوا وهم يتخافتون ألا يدخلنها اليوم عليكم مسكين وغدوا على حرد قادرين فلما رأوها قالوا إنا لضالون بل نحن محرومون قال أوسطهم ألم أقل لكم لولا تسبحون قالوا سبحان ربنا إنا كنا ظالمين فأقبل بعضهم على بعض يتلاومون قالوا يا ويلنا إنا كنا طاغين عسى ربنا أن يبدلنا خيرا منها إنا إلى ربنا راغبون كذلك العذاب ولعذاب الآخرة أكبر لو كانوا يعلمون إن للمتقين عند ربهم جنات النعيم أفنجعل المسلمين كالمجرمين ما لكم كيف تحكمون أم لكم كتاب فيه تدرسون إن لكم فيه لما تخيرون أم لكم أيمان علينا بالغة إلى يوم القيامة إن لكم إن لكم لما تحكمون سلهم أيهم بذلك زعيم أم لهم شركاء فليأتوا بشركائهم إن كانوا إن كانوا صادقين يوم يكشف عن ساق ويدعون إلى السجود فلا يستطيعون خاشعة أبصارهم ترحقهم ظلة وقد كانوا يدعون إلى السجود وهم سالمون فذرني ومن يكذب بهذا الحديث سنستدرجهم من حيث لا يعلمون وأملي لهم إن كيدي متين أم تسألهم أجرا فهم من مغرم مثقلون أم عندهم الغيب فهم يكتبون فاصبر لحكم ربك ولا تكون كصاحب الحوت إذ نادى وهو مكذوم لولا أن 
تداركه نعمة من ربه لنبذ بالعراء لنبذ بالعراء وهو مذموم فاجتباه ربه فجعله من الصالحين وإن يكاد الذين كفروا ليزلقونك بأبصارهم لما سمعوا الذكر ويقولون ويقولون إنه لمجنون وما هو إلا ذكر للعالمين زق الله خير Hope Alhamdulillah, you just understood one surah of the Quran, you've understood its blessings and its meaning. Tomorrow inshallah is surah Haqqah, it is about the day of judgment, A to Z of the day of judgment, step by step inshallah, very nice surah. Uh, and please call all brothers and sisters, whoever you can, make sure they attend. I apologize, I think we've gone over time quite a lot. Tomorrow, because the, one of the reasons we actually did that is because we have Asr time here in Kuala Lumpur, uh, and it encroaches upon it. So what we will do tomorrow is get the classes to start at uh, at 5.15 sharp, inshallah, okay? 5.15 sharp, make sure your asas are prayed, make sure all the salats is finished, inshallah, okay? So 5.15 sharp, all those people who are online as well, my apologies, we started, uh, it wasn't really intentional, it's because asa prayer is late here. So 5.15 inshallah, sharp we will start. KL time tomorrow, inshallah. Zakullah khair, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Hmm.